How's it going guys? Matt here from Code Tech Tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at the null object design pattern and what it generally solves. We're going to be showing this in C++. So uh, yeah, strap in. We're just going to dive right into it as I adjust my editor on the fly. All right, so I already made a null object folder in our design patterns folder for this repo. I made a main dot cpp and an object dot h to write our little class hierarchy in that we're going to work with so i'm going to start with the wikipedia example of this in c plus plus and explain that but we'll get into a few more advanced things later io stream we're going to include that because we're going to use it okay so uh what if you uh have a bunch of animals in your program for example maybe you're making a game or you're who knows what maybe you're tracking animals in the in the desert or in the rainforest or whatever so it doesn't matter just need an example, right? That seems to come up in all these tutorials. Doesn't matter, just need some kind of example. All right, so we have animals, um, but an animal can't be generic, we'll say. So we'll say we have to instantiate one because uh, we'll get to that a little more later, put a little theory about how you wanna work with your memory. We'll come up later about this as well. So look forward to that. All right, so a little destructor there just because this is gonna be pure virtual and let's just say we need a function here and on the wikipedia they have make sound but i'm going to say like get animal type or something i mean get sound is fine make sound make sound because it's just going to operate on it and make some sound except in this case it's equal to zero so we're going to say you have to overwrite it and uh, we also want to do a const all right so make sounds just like a single action kind of thing it's a weird way to put it but it's also pure virtual. It makes this an interface class. So we could stick with our standard and put an I here, like I animal. Sure, let's do that. So that kind of seemed weird on this word for some reason, but whatever, we're going to stick with it. All right, and let's say we want to make just a dog. So we need to inherit from our animal interface and override the make sound because that is required. Visual Studio should help us. Let's see if it will. Do a little right click quick actions implement pure virtuals doesn't work but it kind of tried unable to create function anyway we just need this right there instead of equals zero uh, we're going to define it. we're also going to put in the word override before we define it okay so what sound does dog make i think we can figure that out it makes a wolf or a bark or a growl wolf bark growl going to make all three in our case we'll put a new line there all right well so now we have a dog that we can instantiate we can go over to our main make our main actually work here instantiate a dog fix our include go dog dog one and then we can call its operation make sound that should be all defined use io stream do its thing and we should be able to work with that let's go ahead and uh, fix our c make the rest of the way put null object folder here as we already got it uh, here and then when we generate we should see it pop up in our list of runnable executables here oh, we have some kind of error i put folder in here instead of object for some reason there's the null object executable and we should be able to get the dog bark sound here there it is wolf bark growl okay so the thing with the null object is well what if you have for example some client i don't know i'm just going to call it client that takes an animal, um, let's say const animal, and it wants a reference, so it needs an actual instantiation. Uh, let's make it i animal here, and let's say it just calls an operation on animal, like animal dot make sound. Now, there's two things here. This interface cannot be instantiated, so you'll never never be able to instantiate that and pass it in. So there's one thing that's interesting here. And how do we know if it's a dog or what? Okay, well, and what if what if there's nothing to pass in? What do we pass in then? Do we just make a random one? No, this is where null comes in. Because there's another way of designing. You know, if you do it this way, you have real instantiations that you're accessing. If you do it this way, let's say uh, I'll make a client two. Actually, it can be client. We can do some override. And this one also takes the same thing. But this time it's a pointer. And it would go, you know, something like this. Got a dereference, make sound. So this one can actually have null, but if you pass null into here, it's gonna attempt to call a function that doesn't exist and your program is going to crash right here. So you need to do a null check, essentially, if you're gonna do this. You need to say if animal. 
got to do that null check. So you can design your program in a way where you never have to do these null checks. And that's a really interesting thing. You know, that gets into more, I don't know what the terminology is for it, but if that's the way you want to go, you can do that to avoid have to do null checks. You just know that your program works consistently. It's actually a pretty valid thing to do if you want to avoid pointers. So you would only accept references, which only are real instantiations. So what if something's not instantiated and not instantiated and you need to pass it a dummy model? That's when you pass it a null one. So you need to make a null animal basically, or a null for whatever it is. So we're going to make a null animal here, inherits from animal. And this one essentially just does nothing. We want to override the make sound and we want to do absolutely nothing. Default behaviors. So now when we go through our program logic and we decide we want to call some function on animal, if we don't have a proper one, then we can make a null one. All right. Now that's kind of the standard right there. So down here you would go client. We need to pass it something, right? So let's make something to pass it. We could make a dog and we could just uh, pass it here. just like so that easy and that'll work. That'll call it, right? Let's give it a check. Client a keyword. We're gonna rename this function control animal. Be sure client is some kind of reserved word or something. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I probably just forgot a semicolon or something. Yeah, I did right here. When you declare your classes and structs, yeah, you need that semicolon. All right, Let's see if it works now. And there we go. It does as expected. Calls the make sound on the dog. But what if you're going about the logic? of your class and you have a control animal and it tries to take over or call, but there's nothing to call. That's when you want to have a null one at the ready. So here's another thing about the null object. You should probably make it a proxy of some sort and you should have one statically initialized at all times. That way you don't have to always make new ones and reinitialize. You can just pass the same null animal or null object around. So if you just have it in your main, that's fine. We just go null animal, I don't know, call it null animal, and it does nothing. So if we go to this control animal function and say, for some reason, we have nothing to pass it, where you would normally pass it null, maybe you just pass it this instead, and you kind of make that as a default, and you can see that that does nothing because it calls the make sound. So in this way, we don't ever have to mess with pointers and checking for null. We just stick with this system. And that's uh, one of the main points. Let me see if I can uh, cover any further points on this. I think there's a few more things I wanted to mention, but uh, I got to look. Okay, well, I guess another big takeaway here, just want to try to make this use case clear, is um, just having one of these null animals. Because, for instance, in your loop of whatever your program does, maybe you go into a bunch of different levels, and maybe you, uh, you know, switch scenes, load things, unload things, go into different uh, stacks, we'll say, or stack frames or stacks of loaded data, and uh, you don't want to be reinstantiating null animal all the time, or your null object in general for whatever your entity thing is. You just want to leave this one globally, sit there, only instantiated once, ready to be uh, referenced anytime something is uh, default. But, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's also nice because, you know, if you're making database calls and connections, you can have the null one be a placeholder that, you know, doesn't try to open connections and all that stuff. And only when it's fully set up, like for example, if you're building customers instead of animals, for example, um, you could have it so that the customer has to have certain info filled out before your function to make the next call for whatever it is you need goes forward. And if they don't have all that, you could you know, you could have it the null defaults or whatever, and those might reject or not do what they're supposed to do. So that's all a lot to say that you basically just don't want to instantiate this a whole lot of times by somehow making it globally referenceable uh, within its proper context, not necessarily global, but, you know, scoped within its general context. Like it might be within your entity system. You might just have one that instantiates or something like that. And then whatever takes over your entity system, it still doesn't, uh, destroy the null one every every time or something along those lines and then uh you know to talk a little more on that you know if you're trying to get an entity and it doesn't exist you could instead pass them the reference to the null one and say okay you tried to get entity seven for example if maybe they have ids or something i'm not going to code that up but you can imagine you have an entity system and you try to get it by id it doesn't exist you could pass in the null object there and uh have it say whatever you want to say or do by 
that overload, uh, not overload, but instantiation, and then overridden functions. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you can come up with with this pattern, where you use it, and all that. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next episode. You sound.